friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. Got another family heirloom, old classic guitar. Kind of a cool old guitar. Apparently the man bought this when he was in Vietnam. The story I remember him telling was something about uh, these kinds of guitars were brought over there for the servicemen and they were able to buy them, I guess, at a discount. He bought this, you know, back when he was in the service and it's been with him, you know, ever since. And now the son wants to more or less restore it. It's got a number of issues. None of them are terrible, but there's just a bunch of issues. The, the nut is completely glued in crooked there, you can see, and it's, you know, it's, there's a big gap here and it's sticking out on that end. The, uh, the bridge, uh, I think the son did this when he was like 18, he re-glued the bridge. He used Elmer's glue, which believe it or not, wouldn't be that bad. Elmer's is a pretty good wood glue and it's held, but you know, he, you know, he was in his teens and you know, as you would expect, it wasn't done real well as a teenager and there's glue all over the place. The neck is gonna have to probably be reset on this. Um, it's got a pretty, pretty good angle like that. I don't know how much of that you can see, but uh, you can probably tell it's, see, uh, you can see the neck looks like it's a lot higher than the body there. The other thing that while we're doing this, I was just suggesting, why don't we just make this thing, uh, you know, our regular, dreadnought style. In other words, drill the holes down through here, put the pins in and the strings go through the top, and then it won't be pulling this bridge up like it is. And you know, it's by connecting these strings to the back of the bridge, they always lift and pull forward up. I think we can fix that problem. I can make the bridge look just like this one. It's just that we'll drill holes in it and put the pins down through it. And you know, it. no one, unless they were an expert in these old guitars, would ever know the difference. But it'll be a better sounding guitar, a more solidly constructed guitar, etc., etc. So he agreed that that's the way he wants to do it, and that's what we're going to do with this then, rather than trying to fix the mess that's here. You know, just as easily fix the new one, and it'll be much better. And that's, for the most part, that's it. You know, it's going to need a normal setup and stuff, and I think there's binding loose here, maybe, it looks like. But uh, we'll check it all over. Uh, he's got some some kind of mess here on the back that you can see there's uh, when i get it out of the glare you can see that white like almost like paint i forgot what he told me stuck to that but there's something stuck to it it was i think it was something in the case some kind of papers or something i don't know what it was we're going to see if we can't clean that up too and that might be an issue because that doesn't look like it's going to come off real real easy i see a little little tiny problem here there's a chip out on this plastic here on the end there the tuning keys themselves while being really cheapies i look to be in good shape and look to be functional as far as i can tell i don't see any excessive wear on them and the buttons themselves are fine we may have a pretty good little guitar here oh i think this here's all pushed up too it's it's uh you know i think we're gonna have to work on that too yeah it's loose anyway you can tell it's been re-glued it looks like a couple of times so we can clean that up and do that right yeah it's really rough a lot of things to fix on it let's get started i picked off all the loose glue around the back edge of this uh, bridge uh just took a chisel got in there very lightly and lifted up i i didn't pry because that would cause dents and things i got most of that off and that gives me a joint now where i can get my tool in there and start lifting the bridge off but we're going to uh, try to heat it up real good first and see how well that goes the bridge is really hot right now and i heated up my tool a little bit this uh, Elmer's glue is kind of gummy, uh, sticky-like. I think it's going to let me get it off of there with the heat, but it's, it's not going to give it up real easy, I can tell. It came off, but it wasn't no easy one. I've decided I'm going to go ahead and just get the neck off of it too because the neck is way wrong angle. It's, uh, you know, you can see under the peg head when you look flat down this. I mean, it's that high. It's crazy high. I would say the strings have to be, you know, nearly a half an inch off the, off the uh, neck when you got it strung up. It's way up there in the air. Probably not that high, but probably three eighths anyway. Figure no time like the present. Just go ahead and get that apart too. We'll start more or less from scratch and just build her back and it'll be a much better guitar then. Again, this is a sentimental issue, guys. You know, 
is it worth it? I don't know. It, it's not going to cost a fortune to fix this, but you know, it's going to take time, 60 bucks an hour. I'm estimating seven hours, probably something like that, which isn't a ton of money. You know, it's, it's reasonable. I'm going to start heating up the knife here, and we're going to go under this extension and try to get the uh, fretboard extension loose from the top. That'll be step number one. I made this larger tool. I'm going to try it under there, see if it gets in there pretty good. I think it will in this case. Eh, it's a little hard to push. That little tool is a lot easier to push. I'm going to heat this one up some more so it'll melt the glue as it's going in there better. Put that wedge in there to hold it up and I'm going to work on these corners to try to get it off over to the dovetail joint. Okay, I think we're good there. I think the extension is loose. I'm going to let it cool off a little bit so it doesn't glue itself back down before I let this wedge out of there. We're going to take this fret out. We're going to drill down and see if we can hit the dovetail joint. I drilled this first hole off camera. I think I hit the uh, pocket. I'm going to drill this one just a little bit closer in uh, to the center, a little further away from the edge here. I want to go down as deep as I can because uh, that just lets that water get the steam get down in there better. I've got my tool here. This is just a you know just a ball pump, if you will, a football pump, basketball pump, needle. I'll have a uh, kettle of steaming water down below on a Coleman stove, and I'll just stick this in here, let it steam the joint, and we should be able to pop this baby loose in no time. Looks like everything would would, would be set up for that. So here we go. Trying to keep the line fairly straight here. It's getting pretty hot already, the line is. I don't see anything coming out right now. I turned it down a little bit. Maybe I shouldn't have turned it down. It all happens at once. The flame was going down on my stove there. I had to pump it back up. Seems like everything always happens at once on this kind of thing. I'm starting to wiggle it a little bit to let that steam get down in into different places. looking inside to see if I see anything going on inside. I don't see anything. Looks fine. I can see uh, steam coming out the joint here on the front now a little bit. Yeah. So we're getting in there. Having more trouble with my stove today than I normally have. Ordinarily I don't have any trouble with that at all. getting pretty loose just trying to wiggle it enough to get the water to move around in there that hot water those wedges really apply a lot of lifting force a lot more than you would think and I'm probably hitting my probably can't go in there very far see if I can get it to uh, come out of there if I pick it up and move it around a little bit. But try a rubber mallet here just lightly on the... I've got a press that I made that I may put on this to see if I can push it out of there because it's pretty loose. There we go. Those wedges really lift it up a lot if you can get them in the right place without hitting the, the guitar itself. They really do a good job. There we go. Lifts it right out of pocket. You can see all the melted glue. No damage done to the top whatsoever. You can't see anything there. So it looks really, really good. Oh, it did break off down at the bottom. That happens sometimes, but only a teeny little piece of it broke off. Only a little tiny little piece of it broke off. As a matter of fact, I can't even figure out why it would have broke off. It's, it's loose, you know, you wouldn't think it would break off. Just a little piece. We can glue that back. No real harm done. And not to let anything go to waste, I took that hot water and put it in a bowl, put this pick guard in there so I could get rid of all this cruddy glue that's on this pick guard. We got her all cleaned off. Just a little bit of touch up now and we'll be good. 
I've also learned that that semi-chrome polish polishes up plastic like this, like glass. So we'll probably polish this before we put it back on there and it'll look just like brand new. Well, as you can see, we got her all apart. The time elapsed is one hour and 11 minutes exactly. Now that's from start to finish, including heating the water and everything. So uh, that's pretty fast to get the bridge off and the neck off. One hour, 11 minutes, and not to mention getting the pit guard off, which just basically popped off. I also took the nut off. We've done all the disassembly now. We're going to uh, do a lot of cleanup now because the joints are kind of dirty and, and, you know, got a lot of glue and junk in them. And we're going to do some uh, cleanup on everything. And once we get everything cleaned up real good, then we'll start the uh, rebuild process. I've ripped down a piece of uh, rosewood. The uh, ends here are a little bit flawed, but there's a long scallop in this and I think we can make it work just fine. So we're gonna use this. It's a nice piece of quarter sawed rosewood, so it ought to make a really good bridge for this thing. I'm gonna leave the straight edge as the straight edge across here, and I'm gonna back it up to the back of this piece. I cut it slightly oversized, because I'm gonna, this, this needs to be fairly big compared to the old one, because there's a huge scar there to cover with all the other messes that had happened there. So I am just going to trace around the back edge of it there and make the front edge come out to that area. So it's going to be at least an eighth inch bigger across than the old bridge. Maybe even a little bigger than that. And I'll leave my pencil mark as much as possible too. That'll help. And I think we're good. So we're going to go cut that out make a new bridge. I've been working on this trying to get this off. All this glue. And I got the white glue came off pretty well with this. And then I used this uh, wedge as a scraper and the white glue came off pretty good but there's some speckly glue right in this area here it's rough feeling and I want to get it off too so we can get this all smooth when we put the double stick tape on it'll stick the lighter fluid is actually taken off this other kind of uh, glue pretty well it's, it's a little it's still a little bit of elbow grease but it is coming off so we'll just continue to do that and it'll come off of here eventually When we were taking the extension off here, this little piece of uh, purfling or whatever you want to call it got knocked up a little bit. I'm going to put some of this new uh, binding glue that I use in here and I think it'll work just fine. I guess we can start cleaning up the bridge area. It's kind of a mess, mostly because of the old glue. Just going to try to knock off the big thick stuff first. It might be good enough to get it on there. Just trying to see if it's in the right spot. It's a little difficult to tell. They just messed it up with that glue so bad. I just want to hold it in place, look at it, make sure it's fairly square because it looks like it might be a little crooked. Then I got to get it to cover all the scars as much as possible. About the same distance from the back here on both of these humps. Just going to look at it to see what it looks like in terms of squareness. I'd say that's probably about it. I wonder how far off I am this way. Just try to measure straight across. Three and three quarters right there to that mark. Hard to say where I'm measuring to, but it's not too terribly far off, I don't think. Three and three quarters kind of measuring about through the line here. That's pretty close. I don't think I'm going to get it much closer than that. I think I'm going to mark that and scribe that out and then get rid of all that finish within that area. Something I don't know if you could have noticed from the video, but on this side here, I had to carve this way to carve the glue off without cutting into the grain. That's this center line. So on this side, I had to go that way. On this side, I have to go that way. Now, the reason for that is because this was book matched and it's opened up and the grain cuts one way, one direction, one way, the other direction. So this side, you have to go this way. And that's pretty much that way on every top. Not necessarily that this, it'll be the same direction. One side will go one way, the other side will go the other way. 
And if you don't do that, you'll go under the wood and it'll just keep going under the wood and you'll have a big tear out. But going this direction, glue peels right off the top of the wood without tearing out a lot of wood. So you have to find that direction right at the beginning and then stick with it. So that looks pretty good. We got rid of about 95% of the messes. There's still some glue mess across the front here. I'm going to try to pick it up without touching the top. It may not work. I'm going to try it with a uh, damp rag and see if we can wash this off on the front here. I've been rubbing this glue line right across the front here with water for a while to soften it up and then I'm taking my little wooden wedge it's got a good flat smooth edge on it and I'm just I'm able to scrape that glue loose at least getting the big chunks off of there doesn't seem to completely want to wash off but it does soften with the water and then once you get it the big part scraped off then, then it cleans up pretty good with the water it looks a lot better very little of it left now here's some around this end. Every bit of that that we can get off just makes it look more professional when you put the new bridge back on. I don't want it looking like I left all that glue on there. The last thing I see on here, this stuff right here, and I don't know what it is, it's just kind of beat up like. It might be pick damage. I'm not sure what it is. I'm going to try to sand that a little bit. Yeah, it's some kind of scratches like. I couldn't tell if it was something on the surface or if it was scratches, but it's more scratches. And it's coming out to some degree with this. This is 600. I'm going to lightly sand the area here where the pick guard goes just to get rid of the, any additional scratches and bumps there so it'll be real smooth when we put the pick guard back on. I feel like I got rid of all this weird junk that was stuck to the top. There, there's been a lot of stuff that feels like it's actually stuck to the top of this. It's little tiny things, like there's some right here, and I don't know what it is. It's standing up proud of the surface, and so I'm just trying to sand all those off level. I don't know what they are. They're, it's almost like it something splattered on it, and it's all over the place. Piece right here. There's, there's pieces of it everywhere. But, Got rid of about 90% of it now, I think. I don't feel it now when I rub my hand over it where you could feel it before. Here's some pick scratches up in here again, too, where I guess he was playing off the neck. All right, we're going to try to buff this out now before we glue the bridge back on it. We're going to try to sand all this mess off of here. It's a mess. I got 600, and we're just going to see what happens. Yep, that's taking it right off. It's on there for whatever reason, and it won't wash off or anything else I've tried. I'm using 600 right now. I'll just go over the whole back with 600, keep it all uniform, and then I'll go over the whole back with 1,200 real quick, and then we'll buff it out. We'll go back over it one time pretty quick with some 1200 and then I think we'll call that good. Here's the 1200, we'll just go back over it just kind of quickly, not real deep sanding, just to knock down a little bit of the 600, buff out a little quicker. Getting ready to put this custom made bridge on this guitar and I believe it's rosewood. It's certainly an exotic wood. I'm not 100% sure that it's rosewood, but I believe it is. That's what the people told me that gave me the blank of log years ago. That was a perfectly clean towel and that's acetone and you wipe off those oils and things because there is a lot of oil in this wood. 
It just needs to be wiped down before you glue it on. The acetone doesn't leave any residue. That's the best thing I've found to wipe it down with. You might get by with something like alcohol or something, but I like the acetone. Wipe it down with that first. Then it just feels cleaner and slick. Problem is now it's too slick. So now we will, uh, if you will, tooth it up a little bit. I've got the tooth blade for my plane and I just scratch it. I don't try to make huge dents or nothing. I just don't want it glass smooth. I just want the surface to have a little bit of texture where the glue can get a bite. Some might say I should wipe it down with acetone again, and I might, but uh, you know, this process is pretty good, really. Now we're going to glue it on. I know that I have stressed many, many times in my videos to make sure you get glue on both surfaces. I'm not sure I've explained the importance of it, just that you should do it. To me, the importance of it is that if there's one place on an instrument that you don't want to skimp, it's on your bridge. Uh, you really want that glued better than anything else on the instrument. And it's just the simple math of the foot pounds of energy that are being pulled on that thing. So, you know, it's just that simple. Don't skimp on your bridge. Put glue on both surfaces. Make sure every square inch is covered. Now I got more glue on this than I need, so I will simply take it and put it up here, and I'll add more glue as I need it, but we'll cover this now with the extra glue here. I don't want a ton of squeeze out. That's not the goal. The goal is perfect coverage. In fact, I prefer almost no squeeze out. Just get the glue on there, perfect coverage, where there's no air pockets at all. Because you only get one chance at this. My goodness, you might as well take advantage of it. There's no time crunch here. You just take your time and you get it done. Well, yeah, there's a time crunch, but it's not a significantly fast time. You, you've got enough time to do this, and so take your time and do it. You might want to work it both directions to get it down in the grain of the wood, because this spruce you know the grain is very strong going this way and you want to make sure you get it down in those pores and you know in every little nook and cranny you want every advantage you can get when gluing this together and you certainly want to make sure this back edge especially is glued because that's where it always lifts up so this back edge is the most important part of all of it and even after all that, it still looks like there's a spot right there that's not really sticking glue for some reason. There might be something on the surface there. It looks like it's okay now. All right, I think we're pretty darn good shape. The other advantage of taking that finish off is that you can set your bridge on there and it just locks into place. You don't have to go, I wonder if it's in the right spot. You can feel it. It goes in there and you can, you know, it doesn't move. So that's another clear advantage to doing it the way I just did that. And it's also the reason why you don't want to over glue it. If you put way too much glue on there, then it's harder to find that little sweet spot where it's sitting down in there and it doesn't move. I don't think I need any calls inside this one. It, I think the clamps are gonna clamp up pretty straight. And uh, Pretty sure I can you know, clamp them just fine without any additional inside calls. Okay, the glue is starting to slowly squeeze out. I'm going to put these wings down now to help it squeeze it out some more. I'm going to clean up the squeeze out before I put the additional clamps on it. It keeps squeezing out, so it's working pretty good. Ordinarily, I put these back up on top, but I think I'm going to put these down here because these wings are so long. You can see the additional squeeze out there just immediately. There's more squeeze out, quite a bit more. So I think that was a good call. After clamping this up, I decided to go ahead and put a call on the inside of this, mostly for the reason of just keeping the inside flat. I don't think it absolutely needs one, but I decided to go ahead and do it. I think putting a call in there was a real good idea. I could say it was a real good call. Ha ha ha. You can see it's already squeezed out a lot more juice out of the glue. I just think it was the best way to handle this situation. I don't always put a call in there, but I would say, you know, if you're in doubt at all, you ought to put one in there. They can be a real pain in the neck because they're hard to get in there and get 
your hand in there with the clamp and everything else. There's other ways you could do it with some two-sided tape and things. That can be a lot of problems too. I think we got her. Now just clean up all the extra squeeze out. Alright, we'll let that set up for a day and we'll be ready to go. The bridge has been setting for about four and a half hours. I'm going to go ahead and take the clamps off of it to go ahead and continue working on it because I'm so far behind I think I'm in front. If you don't know what that means, go around a racetrack where you're racing a bunch of people and when they start lapping you, you'll understand. Yeah, that's a nice looking bridge. It's going to be a really good one. What I want to do is start working on this neck angle. The problem with this neck, it, it's from the factory. You know, look at that. That's how much slops is in it. There's nothing broke. That's just the way it's made. We didn't cut out any extra wood or anything. It's just got that much slop in it. And you can see it's got that much slop up and down and both both directions. The sad thing about this is that when this is tilted all the way down it's about at the right angle and you can see there's a huge gap up here. You know I'd say that gap is a hundred thousandths almost eighth of an inch and that angles pretty close to the right angle. It might be a little low so we're gonna have to take a lot off of this heel up to nothing on here and then we're gonna have to fill this all back in. Quite a job actually. I don't have any measurements I'm just doing it by eye and experience Experience. I'm just marking this off, tracing it on here with a sharp exacto knife. So to me, that's what has to be cut off as a crust there. Ain't nothing to it except to do it. This is pretty sharp, but it can always be sharper. That didn't take long, just a little bit of cutting there and I think I've got the thing straightened up pretty good on where it needs to be. It doesn't look too terribly bad on the angle but it's hard to tell. It's so sloppy, it's so hard to hold. This is just way wrong. It's just wrong all the way around. So now that I've got it like that I can see about how much space there is there. So we're going to need some pretty good sized shims trying to see how far down this goes, if it goes all the way to the bottom or does it bottom out. I think it bottoms out before it gets there. I think it hits on this way before it gets to the bottom of this. In other words, the fretboard is hitting before this is getting way down to the bottom. So it could use some extension here too. All that makes it stronger. I made two 100 thousandths shims. Actually, these are probably a little bit more than 100 thousandths. And I just set them in here just as a test. And I slide the dovetail in there now. And it goes part of the way, but it won't go all the way. I think these are going to be good for gluing on here. You know, once we get them glued on there, then we can start fitting it and making it a proper fit. That should make it a lot better neck joint. The other thing I notice in here is that this is not straight. It's crooked. If you see that it rotates around a point there, so I'm going to have to flatten that off before I glue that. That'll make a big difference too. It just, uh, it is what it is. It's just not done very well from the factory. I'm just cleaning off all the old glue off of this to, so I can, when I glue my patches in there that they'll stick really well. When I get this done, the fit should be tight enough where it hardly has to be glued at all. That's the way I like to make them fit. That's quite a bit better. Still a little bit of a rock. Okay, I'm gluing these little shims on here. I'd like to tell you that was a simple clamp job, but it wasn't. Well, these shims have been sitting up drying for, well, well over a day or two, actually. So, we're going to see now what kind of fit we get here. It's uh, obviously going to be real tight, and that's what I would have expected. And it's not going to go down, and that's what I want. Because I want to work it into a very tight fit all the way down. I'm going to look down it to see if it looks like it's roughly straight down the down the guitar this way. You know, I don't want it canted either direction. I also don't want it twisted this way. 
and of course it has to be in the right angle this way. It's like flying an airplane. You got to get all three angles right or you're going to crash. And that's kind of the way this is. I can tell it's twisted, it's, it's canted to this side, to the base side a little bit. The angle down looks pretty steep at the moment, but that's hard to tell. And the twist, it looks fairly flat. It doesn't look twisted too much. With knowing that it's going towards the top, since it's canted this way to the base, that would mean I'd need to take some off of here so it could go that way. So we're gonna start on this side here take a little bit off of this side right here and that'll let it go back the other direction. I don't have any particular uh, way of doing that right at the moment. I mean I could put carbon paper in there and all that but I think we're too far into it. I mean we're too far away from the fine tuning right now so I'm just going to knock some of it off of here see if it helps. Probably should have picked a different wood other than bird's eye maple for this. I, that's just the shim that stock that was laying there when I decided to make some shims probably would have been better just to have plain maple not bird's eye <laughs> just carving a little bit off this edge and the lower edge just wanted to see if that starts to change the angle I'm going to use my carbon paper put it in there and start to see where it's rubbing because uh, you know you need to take off the high spots first that's what you need to do tells me it's fairly level it's not going too much this way uh, you know as I go back through here it's about the same height here as it is here which is just about right especially at this stage because when I get it all the way down I would like for this to be about level with this if maybe just a hair above it you know maybe a sixteenth above it something like that I definitely don't want it below it that's for sure if you keep cutting the high spots off you'll get more and more black on this as you go uh, that's just the way it works and so when you get it where it's almost solid black well then you know you've got it touching just about everywhere it's going in pretty flat Based on that, it's pretty good. Yeah, well, about wore that little piece out. It's not symmetrical here. It needs to go that way. I can tell that by looking at it too. What I'm going to have to do is actually cut some off of this edge here to get it to go that way a little bit before I get too much further along. Now that I see this, I see black marks on this too. So definitely I think this edge is a little long. Felt like I cut more off the other side when I cut the angle to begin with. It does not take much on something like that to change a lot. So I'm just cutting a little bit. I'll see how my lines line up now. Didn't even change it too much, it doesn't look like in this case. Changed it a little bit, but not very much. I cut some more off of it. I'm going the right direction, I'm pretty sure. It's just that I need to do a little bit more. It's getting very close now, so we're getting down to the critical measurements here. That looks real good. That, that looks real symmetrical now. So now we're about an eighth of an inch from bottoming out and that's the perfect time for that to come in line, I can tell you. And yes, I need to put paper in the other direction. Although the blue rubs off on the back side of this paper, this blue rubs off on the inside. So I can see where it's rubbing on the inside joint also. And I've cleaned some of that up already. So it works pretty good on both sides actually. 
And I think this final cleanup here might be it. I think it's still on this joint here. I think is where I need to work on it the most. That's pretty much it. It may not go any further than that. Now if the angle's pretty good, I think we got it. I think the angle's pretty good. It's not perfect. It go a little bit more this way yet. Oh, it's a tight joint, I'll say that. Boy, that's just about right too. It's it's about uh, 100 thousandths higher than the thing. It's not an eighth of an inch. I would prefer it be not quite that much even, but it's not too bad really. I think we can make that work. When you make the joint right, you can pick that up. And you know, it's I'm you know, I'm just right off of the carpet here, but but you can see like it holds it in any direction. That's a tight joint. That's the way you want them to fit. Instead of that sloppy crap that just gives you trouble over time, you know. And the way it was fit from the factory, there's it was just the glue holding it in place, and that was it. Now the glue, it's just a placeholder almost. It's like the joint holds itself, and the glue just keeps it in the joint, instead of the glue having to hold the neck angle and everything. Now everything's just about perfect on it, really. If anything, I might have the neck angle a little bit steep. I think we can even cure that as we glue it up. We'll, pull, we'll lift up on it, tighten it in there. It's, it's really not bad. It's pretty close. That's absolutely perfect right there. That's about as good as it gets. We'll get her glued up here. We're going to put glue everywhere. Now we're going to clean up all that glue squeeze out. Before I put this pick guard back on the guitar, you can see it's pretty scuffed up. I think you can see that. And I'm going to use this semi-chrome polish and, and see if we can get rid of those scratches and scuff marks and dings and all that little junk. My experience is, is that it sure does make it look nice. I thought it would be nice to do this before I put it back on the guitar because I've already got the guitar buffed out pretty good and this will avoid any smudges or smears around the edges. You can see the difference there. Sure does make it look nice. Now we will put the two-way tape on the back side. Well, there we go. We should have it ready to put on the guitar here. There's lots of different methods for putting these on. Main thing is that you get everything clean and flat and ready to go. Just generally just use the hover method. I hover right above where I want it faster for me. Someone had glued it way down here at one time and that's not where it goes. You could tell that it had been in this location also, but they moved it down here and made a mess out of it. it you can tell it fits right here because this is the curve of the uh, of the sound hole. I dry fitted it several times and you can see once you you know there are glue marks in this location also so I'm putting it back where it originally was rather than where they had glued it temporarily and now it's stuck down really good the surface was really clean and buffed out it's made a good adhesion I think I don't think it'll come off again not in a long long time anyway that's about all the decoration work we can do as you saw, I'm making the cap here. I'm making it out of a piece of antler. I believe this was actually elk antler. It's not a perfect match in color, but it's close. It's a permanent fix. It won't ever crack and break like the other one did. And it's what I have, and that's why I'm using it. I don't have the right kind of plastic to make this. I'm just trying to get the fit perfect. It's real close to perfect, but I'm going to sharpen this pencil really sharp and then mark a little fine line there yet. Don't know if you can see that little tiny fine line right on the edge here. It's a little thicker back here and gets real narrow. And I'm just going to go till that pencil mark just barely disappears. Well, that's about as perfect as it's going to get. You can't feel it when you rub your fingers up it. And, uh, you know, it just it feels like it's just one transition there. So it's just one piece like pretty darn good. So we're going to glue her in place. I'm going to use this new binding glue to do this. I think it's going to work real good for this. I like this stuff. It's very sticky and it cleans up real easy with just water. 
which is a huge benefit. And it seems to fill little tiny gaps real well too, so it's just good stuff. I really like this stuff. Well, we're finally at the point where we're ready to string this up. The nut on this is plastic. You know, I prefer the bone if I'm gonna do anything to it, but I don't see a single thing wrong with this particular nut. You know, you can spend an hour or more making this nut. That's $60 or more, you know. If the nut's not broke, I say don't fix it. That's my opinion. It, it doesn't change the sound up here enough to make it worth that extra money, in my opinion. Now, a lot of people will argue with that. They just claim it makes all the difference in the world. Well, it might, on an open string, make a little tiny bit of difference. But you got to remember, your closed strings the nut's not even in play when you're playing a note. So it has nothing to do with your sound at all. 99% of your sound comes down here. So I say don't fix it unless it's broke. It ain't broke in this case. I may change my mind because who knows, it, the slots might be cut too, too low. And if that's the case, then we'll replace it and put in a bone nut. But right now we're going to go with that. We're going to now work on intonation, putting a couple of strings on here just to get the saddle slot cut in the right place. Well, I'm really glad I made this bridge oversized because look how close the saddle is to the front there. So it's a real good thing I made this bridge bigger because it's really getting close to the front edge. We've got about an eighth of an inch from the front edge here to where the slot's going to be. And to be perfectly honest with you, it's still a hair flat. Let's look at the tuner if you can see it. There's open. It's just a hair flat even there. Still even a hair flat on that one and now why is it it's lying to me now? there. I thought maybe it was writing on this fret and giving me a false reading somehow, but it's not. It's there's it's clearance there. There's clearance there. So so I'm like I said. I'm just really glad I made it that much bigger. Because had I not see apparently obviously it's never it was never right from the factory. It it couldn't have been. It just couldn't have been. It's just a hair flat. I'm going to mark it there and, and cut it there. I do not feel comfortable going any closer, so that's as close as I can get. And I'm going to even make it a thinner saddle than normal so that I can cut a thinner slot than normal because I'm afraid, you know, well, I mean, I'll be, it'd be the same distance from the front one way or the other. I guess that won't make any difference. I'm going to uh, make sure I don't cut past the front mark. I've got my real sharp pencil here. I'm going to put a line there and a line there, and I'm going to make sure I don't go in front of that line. You can only do what you can do. Had I known that was going to be the case, I would have made it even another, you know, sixteenth of an inch bigger out here in front, and just to give myself a little bit more wood. It's going to look a little weird, but that's where it needs to be. You know, I mean, I can't help that. It's just the way it is. 
the action's going to be great on it. The action is just going to be perfect. The uh, neck angle couldn't be better. You know, everything about it's just perfect, except for the fact that this bridge really was in the wrong place from the factory. I kind of thought that looked like a lot of space in here, because generally there's not that much space. Generally, there's enough, this is up here another eighth of an inch or so. Again, that, you know, every pick guard's different too, so that you can't go by that. But it just looked like there was a lot of space there. So, sure enough, there is a lot of space there. This could go up further and we'd be in a lot better shape. I had everything set up there, had it all working, so I didn't want to uh, stop and explain. But I put a, a shim in stock in here, if you will. I'm just guessing it's 125 thousandths to move it out. A viewer and customer friend, I believe uh, the customer part of it was on that Regal restoration, sent me this drilling jig here for drilling these bridge pins. As a matter of fact, he sent me a couple of them. This one seems to be the one that fits closest to this particular guitar. Now, because I had to put this saddle so far up front on this bridge, you know, I don't want to move this pins all the way as far back as they would normally go. I'm trying to split the difference a little bit, make it not look too weird. It's going to look a little weird no matter what I do. I'm going to go with it right there. I've got this tightened down. I'm just going to try to get one hole in here and then I'll put this um, pin that goes in here to hold it in place. Before I even do that, I'm going to mark the outside of this on here in case I bump it so I know how to line it back up. I'm just going to try to get the one hole drilled at this point. It looks like it's going to work okay. I also wanted to make sure that I was drilling through the bridge plate and now I get to double check and see if I really did drill through the bridge plate. Not that it's going to make much difference now because I, it is where it is. I have to be honest, it's right at the back of the bridge plate. It's an eighth inch from the back of it. That's about what I was afraid of. I'm going to probably extend that bridge plate a little bit more too before I uh, finish this thing up. But it is what it is, as they say. You know, you can only go with what you got to work with. And what we had to work with here wasn't ideal in this case. Well, the drill bit is apparently a little smaller than this. I'm going to take this to the drill press, but I just wanted to uh, get the one hole in there, get it lined up good first. I'll have to resize that hole just a little bit to make this pin fit. I decided I'm just going to drill them right here. Uh, the drill press is, you know, it would work great if I had some help, but, you know, having to hold everything and it's just easier right here. Now, what I'm going to do is just temporarily put this drill bit down in that hole and move this over to here. Uh, probably should have put it in the other hole. I think that's pretty solid. I, I think I can go with that and get the other holes drilled. Moving that over just a little bit so I got a little more room to drill here. Well, that should take care of it. Okay, so now I'm gonna look inside again to see how bad I messed up that bridge plate. Well, actually, they're all within the bridge plate, so it's not too bad. The worst part is, is that the bridge plate is made out of a soft wood. It wasn't made out of a hardwood, which it should have been. I think what I'm going to do is just go with it like it is right now. If I see any pull up whenever we string it up, then I'll uh, address that issue at that time. But right now it looks like it's going to be fine. I'll show you what I've started doing. I've started doing this on the last three or four bridges and it just works much better than anything else I've tried. You wouldn't think this would be the thing, but it is. See how it cuts these clean holes. There's no tear out at all. And then you can use the next size to be bevel the corner, the edges here. It just makes a really pretty clean hole. Just does a nice job. No tear out at all. It's just really pretty hole. That was a five millimeter hole to start with. And then you can take your reamer and run it down in there just lightly. You don't have to go very deep. And then that straightens out the bottom of the hole, makes it tapered because the top of the hole is already more or less tapered because of that bit, that larger bit. It's really nice. It's the best thing I've done on these kind of pin deals in a long time. I kept trying to find something that would bevel the hole without tear out and I haven't found it. I've tried a ton of different bevel tools. None of them satisfied me, especially on hard quarter sawed wood. And that's what this is. This is very hard, very quarter sawed, and everything I tried had some kind of tear out or chatter or something. This has nothing. It's clean, perfect, smooth hole. 
Okay, so now we're gonna get some bridge pins and we're gonna string this puppy up. Got my new tool here setting up the uh, action on this instrument. Like if I put that to 60 thousandths there, it doesn't really matter where you put it. Then you press down on the string, you can see it goes to 30 thousandths. So it's 30 thousandths of string maneuvering there going on. So it's it's high, you know, by a, roughly half of that. If you had it about 15 thousandths, that would be pretty good, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood on this high string. It's about twice as high as it needs to be. So here we go to work on that a little bit. I like my new tool for the initial checking, but as far as just doing the quick fix, it's it's just, it's slow, you know? I mean, that's the truth of it. It's, it's very accurate, but it's slow. This is much faster, just using my pick method. It's much faster, especially for quick checking and all that kind of thing. Once you get it down to the final thing, if you really, really, cared and wanted it perfect well then you could go back to this tool and get it perfect but to be honest the pick is by far the quicker and the uh you know just and it's very accurate too it's not that it's not accurate or anything it's just a much faster method and i think we about got it where we want it and it's still a little bit high so you can see how if you were doing this with the uh, other tool, it would just take a lot longer. Not that you don't want to use the other tool, you might want to use it right at the end when you get down to that detail. I would say that's probably 20 thousandths right there. Don't have it up to full pitch. Let's just check it with this tool now and see if it's about 20 thousandths. That's where I'm just guessing it is, and that's a guess. Okay, it's on 50. If I press it down, it ought to go to about 30. It's actually going a little less, so we're probably pretty close. Let's see here. Let me get it right on 50. It's going to 18, 17, 18. Going right to 18. So it's right on the 18 thousandths. I thought it was just a hair high of this, but it's really close. It, it doesn't move hardly. So 18 thousandths is plenty good. This one here is not that much too high, I don't think, already. Let's just check it and see. I think it's probably maybe only 25 thousandths at the present time instead of 30. There, It's on 70 right there. And it's going to 40, so it's still about 30 thousandths high, too. That's where it's at right now is about 30 thousandths. We want to reduce that by almost half. I really like the tool for the accuracy. It's very accurate. That ought to be pretty darn close right there. Let's just triple check it. I think it's going to be right about 18 thousandths. It's got to be pretty close. It's on 60, so it's going right to 18 thousandths. Right on the money, Sonny. That's why I say this is very accurate, because this is 18 thousandths. That one's already close enough. That one doesn't need anything. This one can use some work, so we'll go with this one next. You can take a lot off of these pretty quickly sometimes, so you want to check it. Especially when the slots weren't cut well to begin with. And that slot there was narrow, so when I opened it up, I, you know, the string will drop a lot just because you opened it up. These are light strings. These are the J616s from D'Addario. I think that's probably going to be close enough right there. Yeah, maybe not. It still could go down a little bit. That's pretty close right there. Let's just check it. We can turn this around this way now. It's difficult to hold it flat on a curved fretboard like that, but that looks just about right. It's about 19, 20,000, something like that. That's pretty close. This one's just a tiny bit high, but not very much at all. I can tell this old guitar is going to have a really good sound for a harmony, you know? I, I've never thought harmonies had all that great a sound, generally speaking, but I'm pretty sure this one's going to kill. <laughs> I think this is going to be one of the best ones I've ever heard. And I'd like to think I had something to do with that, changing that bridge around.
You can go too far too fast, so it's better to file a little and check a lot. Yep, that's right on the money. So I'm good with that. This is going to be a good sounding guitar. The action here at the 12th fret is 90 there and 115 right here. So we could take off a little bit more to make this 80 and we could take off a little bit more to make this 90 and we'll be good. Well, I took, uh, I think, almost 50 thousandths off the bass side and 30 thousandths off the treble side and here's 90 thousandths and you can see the string just doesn't even move. It's right there. Here's 80 thousandths and the same thing. It's right on the money. So it's just about as perfectly set up as it could be. I tell you what, this thing has got the sound. What do you think of this sound for a harmony guitar? It's something else. plays easy now you couldn't hardly beat it you'd have to spend some real money to buy one any better than this thing <laughs> I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out I'm pretty sure the customer is going to be delighted I am 99.99 percent sure this thing's never been this good even when it was brand new from day one from the factory well friends I hope you've enjoyed the video up to this point uh, as you can tell, this was one of the older videos that came out of the vault and Melissa put it together for us. Uh, I will tell you, uh, just a side note, that this uh, video crashed on us probably, well, just I couldn't even count how many times. It crashed on me personally at the very end when I was just reviewing it after she was finished. It crashed on me probably 15 times or more. So I can't even imagine how many times it crashed on poor Melissa trying to make the video. Now, what I mean by crash is, I mean, it literally shuts off and goes away and you have to restart the whole program and bring the video back into it and start all over again. It's just, it's a nightmare. And a lot of those videos in the can are that way and they were filmed with my old cameras and those old cameras, I suppose, were the cause of that because I used to have it crash all the time. But that's just a side note. I just wanted to let you know that, that uh, we really do go through a lot to put these videos out. And poor Melissa, I think, found out how much I've been going through all these years. But uh, anyway, I wanted to let you know that uh, I, I did play and sing a song on this. And we're going to put that in the next video. And the reason being because it's a, a popular song. And I'm sure YouTube is going to grab all the revenue. And after all the hassle we went through on this video, I'm not about to let them take the revenue away. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the video up to this point and I hope you'll join us on the video following this with the same number with an S after it and that will be the song that we played on the guitar and it's a popular song that I'm sure you will recognize. Hope you'll join us there. Thank you for watching. Yeah.